Today, these paradisiacal islands are on hold. Tourists, partygoers, misfits, and millionaires, perhaps their last happy years, are living there. Because of pollution, it is gradually destroying the 300-kilometer-long coral reef which protects the archipelago from erosion. As a result, a third of these beaches are now at risk. The phenomenon is exacerbated by global warming and the increasingly devastating hurricanes that affect the region. Faced with this predicted disaster, scientists are sounding the alarm. Like Dan Berderno, a 28-year-old young oceanographer. If we lose the reefs, we won't have any defense against any of that kind of uh, wave energy. In 50 years, this whole neighborhood will, will be underwater. And it's kind of a really scary thought to even think about what would happen if we don't have coral reefs. With the emergency, the young scientist decided to take action. With his team, he has developed a revolutionary process to grow coral on a large scale and maybe save the barrier. This is the, the coral tree that is floating in the water column in about 15 feet of water, and that lets all the corals hanging on it have um, excellent access to nutrients and sunlight as well as space to grow. And so they really, really love hanging on these, these trees. It may seem rudimentary, but this brilliant system has been copied all over the world because coral is hard to grow. That's good. Five kilometers from the coast, an underwater livestock farm. 6,000 square meters of coral, a real artificial forest. The scientist dips here every day to monitor growth of its 40,000 grafts. This is the first phase of the rescue operation. Then, the grafts must be transplanted onto the reef to consolidate the barrier. This is a living colonial animal. They take in um, calcium from the water, and then basically via their, um, their growth process, they lay down a, um, a matrix of stone and, and start building up and up on top of each other is what you get, like the reef crest, okay. and, and that creates the shape of the reef itself. In 10 years, Dan and his colleagues have already carried out more than 80,000 hand grafts on 20 sites. In this way, they hope to be able to completely restore the barrier. This is a decline that's been going on for 20 to 30 years in the Keys. And that, you know, every year it's gotten worse and worse. And so we're trying to reverse something that's been happening for 20 years. And that takes a long time. Everyone here is on a mission. Everyone, you know, the oceans are their passion, and the oceans are in big, big trouble right now. Um, so if we don't do something now, it might be too late. Dan and his team don't know if they will reach the end of the mission, but they are determined to fight. On an ocean scale, it's a drop of water. But for the Florida Keys and their inhabitants, a note of hope for this tropical paradise is still one of the destinations for a long time, America's favorite vacation.